Hey everyone, Zach here. Now on to the fourth episode of Voltron Legendary Defenders, fourth season, The Voltron Show. In a way, this is both filler and not filler. Like the story details are overall not part of the ongoing thing, but it does have a place in the bigger plot. Team Voltron is basically working on further recruitment rallies to help liberated worlds join the Voltron Coalition. And for that, Koran is essentially the manager of them, trying to figure out how the Paladins can put on a effective show for the respect for the specific audience. And kind of hits a bit of a creative rut. So from this shady guy who was formerly worked at the space mall, he gets this what looks like essentially a marble called a conscious kneesy mind enhancer. And he's meant to put under his pillow and it'll have some effect they'll kind of open his mind to new creative avenues but it's actually something of an egg that releases like a little slug tick thing that crawls into his ear latches directly onto his brain and I guess kind of overdrives the creative parts of his mind at the extent of sort of good sense, self-care, important things like that. And with that, as the episode goes along, Karam basically becomes like an eccentric rock and roll manager. I'm guessing what that what they were going for. His accent even changes from Reese Darby's, I'm guessing, original Kiwi to something kind of like Southern U.S. So he's sounding more and more eccentric. Sounding less like his original self. Even though they're not really aware of that basic change for some reason. <laughs> Just for say a comedy, apparently. But with that, he basically turns it into a show tour. Just trying to be more stylish, more extravagant, more controlling. Basically putting popularity as a greater priority to the Paladin's actual mission, their interests, their ideas. Some montage bits to show passage of time. I don't think it's stated how many planets they visit, but maybe in the dozens. But there's quite a few standouts once Koran starts to get crazier and crazier. There's some, I'm assuming, callbacks to the brand's roots. Like, individually and as groups, they have to, they start doing goofy, impractical, like, dynamic poses and yelling pretty much every line they have. And things start to get more like inaccurate and simplified for the sake of just putting on a good show they're told to be narrowed down into basically one dimensional s archetypes of who they are also before that actually um, 
due to trying to, I guess, associate older familiarity to the audience's Koran makes them present as the original roster. So Lance is blue and Allura has to play the part of Keith. <laughs> But the like one-dimensional versions that Koran makes them into are Loverboy, Lance, Computer Woods, Pidge, Lone Wolf, Keith, Humorous Hunk, and Shiro the Hero. There's some creative stuff. There's a, I guess, kind of junk robot version of the I forget if it had a name but that like sea creature row beast with the lasers and stuff that they take down with their Bayards um, there's a show on ice <laughs> and to represent the lions and forming Voltron they basically just have like cardboard box lion heads in a format, uh, and Pid, no. <laughs> Hunk, and Lance go on their hands and knees with the heads in front of them, and then Shiro, Pidge, and Keith together stand on top of their backs, and Shiro has boxes for the head and chest while each of the arm ones hold it out for their respective arm but it's not all goofy and gradually like unsettling comedy there actually is some danger later on so it's kind of a side story but it still has an effect on the overall story it's not just them lying around or something they're traveling they're trying to help people out that being said I'm wondering with the occasional Avatar The Last Airbender episode parallels I've noticed a couple times I'm wondering if this is kind of this crew's answer to book three fires the Ember Island players the near series finale clip show that they presented as a highly inaccurate stage play whether it is or isn't connected in some way this was still a fun one also kind of a standout guest character this in terms of this like show tour structure I'm not sure what he's meant to be exactly I'm not sure what role but this alien guy named Bebo B who apparently pretty much talks in just those syllables scared around though he's not exactly Groot He's very simple design, but I like that. Sort of a kind of like pale yellow worm with a dot face and stick arms. Just walking around trying to help with the show, but sometimes getting Koran's way. Say with two more episodes in just this season, I'm guessing things will quickly pick up once more. So now that kind of peaceful, relieved breath with this episode is now gone. But with that, I'll see you in episode 36.